On today's episode of Performance TV, Kathy shows us a safe way to de-rust our radiators. Dave shows us a company blasting their way into your shops and garages. Tommy stops by to show us how to keep our turf. And we add some killer sound to our Mustang and Borla for that deep sound all car guys and gals love. Welcome to this week's Performance TV. Vehicles go through so much with all of the elements, everything that we put them through, and sometimes what's in the motor causes rust. And that's where David's gonna come in and help us. Hey, David from Evapo Rust, you guys also have a product that can help us take care of the radiator, the engine block, the heads, and get rid of that rust. That's right, Kathy. We've got Thermocure, and it's really easy to use. Uh, what we're going to do with this truck is we're just going to drain the coolant, and which we've already done down here. And you can see that's pretty rusty coolant. And when you drain the coolant, you want to be careful with it because it's got ethylene glycol in it, which is poisonous. So you want to make sure you've got it out of the way where no pets or kids can get into it. And you want to dispose of that properly. Absolutely. Now, once you get it drained, it's very simple to use Thermocure. You take one quart of this product, and we're just going to dump it in. Nice and easy. Do we need to add any water or anything like that to it, David? Once we get this completely dumped in here, we're going to add water. We're going to fill it up to the level, and then we're just going to drive the car around. Okay. It'll protect against overheating. It, we want to watch it in cold weather because it doesn't protect against uh, freezing. Well, sure. But it will keep your car from overheating. The reason this is going to make your car run cooler and better is... Rust acts as an insulator. It keeps the uh, heat from going out of the block and into the coolant. So once we get this thing de-rusted, your car is going to run cooler. It's going to run better. You're not going to have overheating. And this is really common in a lot of older cars where people have put uh, different, just water, used water instead of coolant. Sure. And we'll let that go, and then we'll probably have to start it and let it get all into the uh, into the block. But uh, that's really all there is to it. Well, does it does it matter how much we drive it around? Does it depend on if we have like you know aluminum heads and block versus having you know an, an older vehicle? Not at all. It's not going to affect any of the gaskets, the aluminum. It's not going to hurt anything in this car. All it's going to find is rust, eat the rust, and then it's going to pull the rust into solution. So you're not going to have flakes of rust clogging up the, the passageways in your engine. You're, it's going to become liquid rust, and then you're going to drain that liquid rust out of the engine and then you're gonna replace it with good coolant and your engine's gonna run great. Oh, it's gonna run uh, so much better. And some things, of course, we wanna keep in mind too is when we're doing all of this to make sure we don't have any air pockets or anything like that when we, when we get all done because that can definitely mess up your gauges when you're going down the road. What we put in, about a couple of gallons of water? Yeah, it's gonna be about a couple. It's gonna depend on, you know, each one of these uh, cooling systems is gonna be a little bit different, but uh, just fill it up to the recommended area. The difference in water is not gonna be that big of a difference to a thermocure. Okay, well, you know what, David, now that we have this in here, let's get this fired up, get it driven around for a while and, and get it up to temperature, and we'll check back in later on the show to finish all of this up. We'll have more for you here on Performance TV right after this. This edition of Performance TV is being brought to you by Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. Third Strike Performance, your source for late model muscle cars, trucks, and SUV parts and accessories. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to Performance TV. We've all got to clean parts. It always takes time. We want a blaster that's going to blast it. I've got Mark from Bad Boy Blasting here to tell us about his Bad Boy Blaster. Mark. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good. This, this is our model BB1050. This is a unique cabinet in the fact that it's uh, direct pressure and suction. Only guys in the industry to build it that way. Hmm. So if you've got really tough stuff like powder coat, you flip it on the direct pressure side. If you've got more delicate items, you use the suction. Oh, I see. Okay. You got so many different features on this. I don't even know what to point at first. What is this for? A proprietary thing we've got with our machine, that is our intake ports. 
I that, the item on the outside welded is called the deflector port. There's another one on the inside rotated or 90 degrees, and then that allows the air to blow across the cabinet window on the inside, which keeps your windows clean. Oh, cool. So I know that the, uh, most of the cabinets you see, they're always bolted together, but you've got yours welded together. These are welded, and there's two stages to that. Welded and we make a frame, our shell of our machine is two by two eighth inch angle. So we have actually have almost 70 feet of angle iron in this cabinet that builds the structure of it. So beefy, beefy, Oh, beefy. It, it, it's just a tank. Crazy. Uh, and you got it on wheels that lock, you can move it around the shop. Yeah, there's a lot of times that you want to, well, especially with the direct pressure, we have a feature that you can put a hose on this and roll it outside or roll it to the door and you can blast right off your cabinet and blast like a frame or a wheel that you couldn't fit in the cabinet right off the pressure pot. Oh, so you don't even have to put it in the cabinet. Right. Killer. Now, in saying that, when we had the foot control, we don't use foot controls on our cabinets anymore unless they're special ordered that way. Hmm. And why? That valve is our uh, valve where if you're blasting, I blasted apart for five minutes, my leg went numb from the standing on the pedal. And I thought, boy, if a guy did this all day, Damn. that would be hard on you. So we came up with this, it's called our HV valve. Huh. So we just turn it one way and we get our suction. Right, you take your right hand and hold the gun and your left hand and flip it on and you can blast for 15, 20 minutes. You're not gonna stand on that. If you, you know, it's a little monotonous to stand in front of the machine continually. Oh, so yeah. you can move around a little bit as you're blasting. Right. All right, let's blast something, man. I just gotta see it work. Okay, all right. So first we're gonna go suction or? We're, we're, uh... You know what, you can go ahead and sit your stand there. You can turn them on, we get the gun. All right. Yeah, we'll go uh, suction first. Okay. Turn that, turn that vacuum on. Oh. There we go. Now you can see how quick the dust is removed from this. You can, uh, with that coming in by the windows, I mean, you're taking off rust like it's not even there. And then how is it going to uh, differ with my pressure gun. Well, what we're going to do here, I'm going to finish this one side with the suction. Go ahead and shut it down. Okay. And now we're going to go over to the direct pressure side. Turn that dust collector right. back on. All right, flip that on. Okay. Now we'll let the pressure build for about five or six seconds and watch this. Now what, the, now what this does, when you're running on direct pressure, Right now, what's your gauge say on the pressure pot? You've only got about 38 pounds of pressure. All right, now look at this. Look what it's doing at 38 pounds of pressure. It's about five times what the suction will do. And what that allows you to do, your media is not making such hard contact, which means that your media is going to last 10 times longer because it's not getting exploded. What do most blasters need for pressure? Uh, suction more than 100, 80 to 100, and your direct pressure, right now, what, we're probably at 50? Right, yeah, about 40. 40 PSI, look at that. And that media will last almost, I mean, you'll, you'll get 10 times the life out of it. So, but other blasters, when they're doing direct pressure, they're a lot higher pressure, like double, aren't they? Well, they're not. Um, you gotta check that down. Okay. We're done. Now, you imagine that? A couple minutes worth of work, you're done. Still. And I'm gonna bring that out and show you how clean that got that. So what you get with running that low of pressure, your media is not getting blown up. And look what you've got in the way of a part. This back up. Look at the finish on that. Killer. Isn't that nice? So you can see we just did that in two minutes. Mark, you got different nozzles for different reasons. Why yes. is that? Uh, if a homeowner, do it yourself or weekend warrior, he runs our ceramic nozzle. They're not real expensive, but let me show you what the boron carbide nozzle does. All right. This is our 1500 hour life nozzle. It's a little bigger in diameter, so it gives you a little more media pull. How long does a normal nozzle last? Two hours. Two, Two hours, and this lasts. Yeah, and you can see how, how it just, how much quicker it takes it off because it pulls you, when you have an uh, eighth-inch nozzle in your gun, you've got to have a larger orifice. And when I've experimented with uh, the nozzle to the orifice, and uh, 
I've got a combination that really works well. So, 1,500 hours versus 250. So two hours. Yep. Still. Yep. So you're, and they do that because you keep coming back. I mean, you're, we sell ceramics for four packets, 10 bucks, but I mean, um, a long life nozzle, it would basically last the lifetime of the machine. I'm really liking it. We've got more performance TV coming up. You all stay tuned. Performance TV coming from Borla Commerce Park. Well, David, we've had an opportunity to drive the heck out of this truck so that right. way we can get everything going through the system and look what has come out. Yeah, we got a lot of rust out of this thing, didn't we? Yeah, uh, so. kind of amazing just in the amount of time that worked. Yeah, it, 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 with the heat and the pressure, it really speeds things up. So what we've done now is we've drained all that. And now we're down to, let's put in some fresh uh, coolant and let's get this thing going again. Well, just to kind of remind folks a little bit about why we wanted to do this to start with, it's because even with putting our coolant in, it's gonna help the engine run cooler by getting all of that rust out. Right, rust is like an insulator. So it keeps the heat from flowing from the metal into the coolant and it, it makes a barrier there. And it, that's why your engine overheats. I mean, the coolant's in there. It, there's no reason for it not to be there except the rust is keeping it from getting there. Absolutely. Well, we've got that out now, so what do we All need right. to do next? We mix our coolant 50-50 with water, and we pour it in. This is going to be probably a pretty terrible pour, but we're going to go with it anyway. I trust you. You'll, you'll do a good job over All there. All right. We've got to clean all that up because you don't want antifreeze laying around. Absolutely not. not. Not on the engine, not on the floor, and you definitely want to dispose of all of this. With our normal evapo rust. We don't have to worry about it, but because this has been mixed with some antifreeze, we really need to keep in mind how to properly dispose of this. Yeah, we need to dispose of that with the antifreeze, for sure. I believe we're getting there. How often would you suggest that someone would, would run the thermo cure through the system? You know, we suggest when it starts overheating. I mean, there's if it's not overheating, you probably don't have enough of a rust problem to worry about, so just, when you start having these problems, put it in, let it go, and uh, take care of that problem. And it only takes one bottle and just a couple of gallons of water. That's Drive right. it around for just a, a few days, and you will see amazing results. David, thanks so much for joining us. We'll have so much more coming up next here on Performance TV. This week, ZMAX Micro Lubricant Minute. Tommy, you know, we've talked about all kinds of great benefits of the ZMAX product. And when you think about something that really takes a beating because of heat and cooling cycles, that would be a turbo. Right, a lot of the cars today, to get more horsepower and increased power, they have a turbocharger on them. What does the turbocharger do? What well, spins very fast, creates a lot of heat, creates a lot of friction. Well, what, how does it get damaged? Well, cool down of the turbo is where the damage comes from. It creates varnish, especially on the shaft. We have the propellers, they're on a shaft in the housing. Well, Z-Max will help treat the shaft because it's a metal penetrant. It will treat the shaft, it will treat the housing, reduce the friction and reduce the heat, make it last longer and reduce the, the varnish on the shaft. Because if it do that, it's gonna rob power. We put the turbo on it to make power. Absolutely. We wanna take care of it. <laughs> Those little engines need these, these turbos. And the way that it works is you are putting the Z-Max with your oil, the oil carries it because your vehicle's oiling system, it's what is oiling this, the right. turbo as well. So Z-Max is not an additive, right. but it's using the oil, and hopefully you're changing your oil like you're supposed to be, so you're not gumming things up, but it's using that to get the Z-Max to the shaft, penetrate, help get rid of that varnish, keep it from varnishing up again, and that's working like it should. That's right, because the common factor, metal, metal treatment. Let's fix the metal and let the lubricant do its job. Absolutely, and Z-Max has been around for a very long time. You want to find out more about what it can do for your turbo, your engine, your transmission, and so much more, hop on their website at ZMAX.com. This edition of Performance TV is being brought to you by Evapo Rust, Super Safe Rust Remover. 
TSS engine run stands welcome a new way of time and space saving engine testing. Schumacher Electric, passion and commitment is the Schumacher way. And by ZMAX, tested trusted performance. Hey, welcome back to Performance TV. You know, one of the simplest and in my opinion, more gratifying upgrades you can do to your vehicle is get rid of that stock exhaust system. So today we have a 2016 Mustang GT in here and we're gonna do just that and we're going with Borla. Now, Borla has different sound levels you can choose from for many of their exhaust systems. For this particular install, we're going with Borla's S-Type. This will fit either the 2015 or 2016 and just like all of Borla's systems, comes with a million mile warranty. You're not gonna find that type of warranty with any other performance exhaust company just Borla. And why? Well, it's because they build it with some of the best materials you're going to find. The Austinetic stainless steel. You're not going to have to worry about the elements, whether your vehicle has to sit outside or whatever. And it sounds amazing. Borla puts all of their XR1 racing technology into all of their systems. So you're going to get maximum horsepower and torque throughout the entire RPM range. Everything you need is ready to go right out of the box and real easy to install. So Dave, why don't you get to it? We've got everything out of our box. We've checked everything and I've got James here from Borla Research and Development to give me a hand. How are you doing today, James? All right, and you? Not bad, not bad. So you've installed a lot of these systems in the past, right? Just a couple, yeah? just a couple. All right. Um, so you might be thinking at home, hey, I, uh, I'm gonna need James to give me a hand but you're not. You're going to be able to install this yourself in your driveway. Just jack it up in the air. Make sure you're safe. Maybe we're going to use a little PB blaster on our things to slide it up in there nice and easy. How's that side going? Yep, there it goes. All right. So that just pops right in. We've got our second piece right here. Make sure we put on our Acu seal clamps. We're going to get a little bit of blaster on there to help us out. These just simply slide right on. Make sure you got your clamps on the pipes first. They'll just twist up a little bit. You can see you've got some hangers right here. This just comes right out with a 13 millimeter socket. It goes right back in the same. And we're just snugging these up right now. We don't want to tighten anything at this point. We have to double check, make sure everything's lightened up nice. Yeah, it's real important to leave all your hardware loose until uh, final adjustment. Alrighty, so this just slides in the, uh, the slot right in there. Factory spot right here. You got yours there. So I know you're sitting at home and you're thinking, oh, this is going too easy. When I get it home, it's not going to work like that. But like I said, you'd be wrong. Borla takes a lot of time to make sure that these are going to fit perfect. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna tighten these up, but a bit. When you go to start snugging everything up, you wanna to try to make sure everything's level and square with the ground. All right, so we're just gonna snug these up a bit. We'll double check everything. Then we'll go back and we'll be tightening. You wanna start from your front and work your way back. And keep in mind that uh, mild steel rusts stainless steel does not. That's one of the reasons you guys can give a million mile warranty. You ever had anybody collect on that as far as you know? We don't have any complaints as far as for rust or corrosion on our systems. All right. So you want to make sure too when you put these hangers on that you get them in a nice position so if you're climbing up underneath your car you won't snag yourself on anything. We're going to go ahead and tighten this up the rest of the way. We'll drop it back down on the ground and we're going to find out what it sounds like. But first, we got something else for you. Hi, I'm David and this is Natasha and we're here with the Evaporust tip of the week. This week's tip is Evaporust, how to use it, where to use it and what it is. It is super simple. All you need to do is take your parter tool, you'll dip it in the solution, let it sit for an hour to overnight depending on the depth of rust, pull it out, rinse it with water, you're ready to paint, prime, oil, whatever you need to do to it at that point. No scrubbing or sanding. So we have this chain here, it's rusted up at the top, but a rust will get into all the nooks and crannies for you. 
See down here, the chain is moving. Also, I'm sticking my hands in it, so you don't have to worry about that, wearing any gloves or protective eyewear. It's non-toxic. It's also reusable, so this solution will just keep and throw tons of parts in it. Uh, we also have a couple of parts out here. This one here, and you see it doesn't even hurt the chrome. It also is safe on painted surfaces. We found this at a flea market, and it turned out beautiful, an old motor oil can. You can see on these, just right down to the bare metal. Super simple, easy to use. There are millions of uses for evapo-rust. Take, for instance, gas tanks. A lot of people have rusty gas tanks on their motorcycles or mm -hmm. cars. Drop it in, let it soak, leave it overnight, pull it out. Now your motorcycle tank is clean, ready to go for the next year. Anything that you have that's rusted, you simply drop in, let it soak, give it time to absorb all the rust. When it gets down to whatever's underneath, it's going to stop. And it's not going to attack or damage any other parts. It's not going to hurt you. And you're going to use it over and over and over. It's safe. It's simple. It gets your parts back to where you can use them again. Definitely. And it doesn't hurt rubber, plastic, wood, anything like that. It comes in a quart, gallon. We also have a three and a half gallon with a special dip basket and a five gallon. You can visit our website to find a retailer near you at evaporust.com. We've got our exhaust system in. Let's see what it sounds like. Kathy? Wait a minute, wait a minute.